Oh my god, I am zooted. Mezzo di voce. It's a singing warm up. Make sure you're supporting yourself. Okay, okay, focus. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Nick Lachey, for keeping me employed because this seems to be <laughs> a series that I'm doing on all the shows the Lacheys are involved in. First, I talked about the ultimatum and then I talked about Love is Blind. And here we are some three months later talking about Perfect Match. And are you the one low key? But before we get into all that, bonjour Nakam, hi. My name's Khadija. Nieces, nephews, siblings, aunties, uncles, siblings, y'all know what to do. But if you're new, feel free to take a look around, suss out the vibe. I just chill in my living room, talk about whatever I want. This is athletic tape. That's why my arm looks crazy. Anyway, and today we're talking all about the perfect match. But before we get into that, we gotta give a shout out to today's sponsor. And I think y'all really like this one because today's video is sponsored by Cheeks. Isn't that such a cute name? So Cheeks is a sexual wellness site and monthly membership that offers a safe space for sexual education and exploration, if you know what I'm saying. I mean entertainment, sexual entertainment. But the reason that I like it and I'm excited to be working with them is that they, <laughs> they actually care about the way that they produce sexual entertainment. You know, they actually try to uh, make sure that the people that work with them or for them are not exploited. They care about your safety. If you're browsing, not having all these damn ads when you're trying to get your pleasure on, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. We're grown. Okay. They've got tutorials. They've got workshops. They've got films. They've got audio pleasure experiences. They've got a pleasure academy that offers tutorials and live workshops and also just great insights from experts. You can get a subscription for $14.90 a month or $9.90 a month if you get an annual one. And there are no minimum terms. You can cancel at any time. And my subscribers get seven days without obligation, free of charge to test out Cheeks if they want to get an annual subscription. Just click the link in my description, the link and enter code Khadija to get seven days free. Thanks again to Cheeks for sponsoring today's video and let's get back into it. So Netflix is the perfect match is a dating reality competition show. That's a mouthful, but it is all of those things that stars different cast members across the Netflix reality TV, Nick, Vanessa Lachey multi-universe. So you got 10 of these singles in this tropical villa being fed all the alcohol and none of the food. Like I don't remember seeing anybody eat but I did see him drinking. And they have to compete each week to see who is the most compatible. Whoever wins the game that week or that episode gets to go into the boardroom. And there they get to decide to bring in two new singles for the rest of the couples that are deemed less compatible, or they can get a date for themselves if they're not really feeling their partner, they wanna see more options. Now, there are only five bedrooms and depending on which episode it is, there are either more guys or more girls. So the couples have to pair off and the two people that don't get chose have to leave single and alone. Unless they decide to bring them back. Or I guess unless your name is Bartise and everybody wants to keep bringing you back. Sorry, this is, this is not gonna be a Bartise hate video. At the end of the series, a couple is deemed the perfect match and they get a all expense paid trip to anywhere in the world for one week. I don't know what those stipulations are, but they couldn't even run a check. That's wild. The amount of money Netflix apparently might have, I don't, anyway. But let's get into the themes since I know that's why y'all are here. Shows like this off rip, operate off the basis that we are all expected to want to be in a relationship. We're all expected to want to prioritize romantic relationships. We're all expected to want to be somebody's person. We want to be chose. We want to be that everything to someone. That's the expectation. And if you're not like that, you're weird. Why don't you want to be in a relationship? Oh, you just haven't found the right one. Oh, you're just not mature enough. Blah, 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 blah. And everyone that comes on the show is like, oh, I guess I suck at dating. Oh, I guess I suck at relationships. Oh, I guess I'm damaged. Oh, I guess I'm this. And it's like, 
Yeah, those things could be true, but also you might just not need to be in a relationship for a certain time. And you see this in the house with people trying to force connections with people that you know they have no business being with. But I guess they just wanted to still be on the show. Um, they were maybe actually optimistic and hopeful that they would find somebody because they felt like they needed to. Like some of these people hadn't even been single for that long. I think Shane had said that eight months before that was when he got left at the altar by Natalie. So it's like, girl. Shane James Jansen, do you take Natalie Nina Lee to be your wife? I do, a thousand times over. You're my best friend. Natalie Mina Lee, do you take Shane James Jansen to be your husband? I don't. Don't you need a bit more time? At least I, maybe I'm just one of those weird people that like needs a bit of time between sometimes. So you're in this environment where everybody is already operating under the premise of we all need to be in relationships or we all know who we just want to be on another Netflix show, but we also maybe want to be in relationships. So we're going to do this. We're going to stick this out. I'm going to try to date these people, even if I barely like half of them, unless you call it, he call it. He was not playing. Call it, he said, get me out of here. Uh, what is going on? You thought Alaska was a country? What? <sighs> God. <laughs> I think in, in that sense, I probably am too young for you then. Damn. Bruh, you were just about to get married. Make it make sense. Yikes. I'm gonna continue to fucking drink, cause yikes. I'm noticing everyone is just pretty like matched or clicked up. I don't know, I just, I don't really like anybody here. And I really wanted to meet my perfect match, but I don't think that person was here for me. So I'm just, I'm, I'm ready for what's next. But something that pops up in a lot of these competition dating reality shows when you're meant to find a perfect match or the one in shows like this and shows like Are You The One? There's always this one person that everybody wants to be with. In the perfect match, that person was Francesca. And I'm not gonna sit here and try to tear her down. She's pretty. She, like, I didn't maybe get the, like, hype because I'm the kind of person that like, if everybody is after someone, I'm like, okay, but like, are you all really after this person? Are they really like that special and attractive? Or are you just into them because other people are into them and you want to be the one that gets them? And I think she also felt a sense of that too, of when she was talking about Damon and how Damon, is his name Damon? No, <laughs> not the Vampire Diaries. Damien, but she was talking about how she wasn't even sure if Damien wanted to be with her or if he just liked that she was attractive and all of these things, because what did they really even talk about? I don't know if I have the ick or like what's going on. Damien's ex said that he was bad in bed and part of me thinks he's trying to pursue me so heavily in the bedroom because he wants to redeem himself. So I don't know what part of this is real. Like, do you actually want to date me or do you just want to fuck me and prove to the world that you're actually good in bed? Like, I don't know. She's not stupid. And it's so interesting because to me, it, it's sort of a reflection of how a partner privilege works in the real world where sometimes I don't know if we examine our dating preferences enough to think, okay, do I actually want to be with this person because I'm attracted to them? Or is it because, yeah, I'm attracted to them, but I like that other people are attracted to them. I like that other people think they're hot and I'm the one that got them. I'm the one that's with the most beautiful person when they walk into a room and everybody wants to be with them. You know, for some people that's intimidating and it's like, no, I can't be with that person. I think of an episode of Sex in the City when Miranda is with this really hot cop and he, all she can tell that all the girls in the bar are staring at him and she gets self-conscious about it, but then decides that she's gonna try to be this hyper fake self-confident version of herself. And he's like, girl, uh. But for other people, it's very attractive. It's such a turn on. Yes, I am with the person that everybody wants to be with, that everybody wanted and nobody could have. And it looks that way from the very first episode when the guys are talking about the F word and they're talking about Francesca, like volleying back and forth. I'm like, maybe y'all think she's attractive. Maybe you think she's smart. Maybe you like her, 
but you don't know anything about her really. And it just seems like you want to compete with each other to see who can get her. Y'all throwing the F word around? What? F word? Yeah. Fuck, Francesca. Oh, look at you. <laughs> you see, I'm picking you. I'm picking you. Yeah, pick yeah, Speaking of competition, I'm not just gonna say that the guys on this show do that because the girls do as well. There were moments on the show where you could tell girls were out here measuring, sizing each other up. I saw Francesca do it a couple times. I saw her do it with Savannah, especially, listen, Savannah, I don't think Savannah was completely wrong. And also y'all were playing in Savannah and Colony's face. You know what? We don't have to go there because we know these shows play <laughs> in people's faces if they got a little bit more melanin. We know they do it to the women with the melanin, at least on Netflix. Are you the one I... There's more representation, but sometimes y'all... Anyway, anyway, I, sorry, we can't get into that. Even when you saw Georgia choose Dom and Francesca was clearly in her feels about it, she was like, well, he told me he loved me last night, so... It's awkward for you because, like, he told me he loved me last night. Like, I know he's not over it. Hope you're happy. I'm sure you'll have a thriving relationship. When he said you loved me last night, you get to <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> she didn't say all that. <laughs> it would have been, woo. <laughs> the whole show genre is competition. So yes, it is expected that there will be a competitive environment and nature to everything that they do. And also, when you get couples together, they be competing to see who's the best couple. Oh, we're, we're more in love. Oh, we're better matched up. Other thing that couples like to do is get together and talk shit about other couples. It's Another aspect of this competitive nature is people really trying to see who's gonna be the best option in a way. They provide scarcity by having one night where it'll be five guys and seven girls. So the girls are the ones on the chopping block and the guys have the luxury of getting to pick who they want. And then the next few days or the next day, it's flipped and it's seven guys, five girls, their scarcity. So the guys have to figure their shit out and compete and see who's gonna be able to be with the girls in it. There's competition is braided into every aspect of this show. And I get it, it's the, re, it's, it's the genre, we know this. But it is interesting to see how power dynamics play in these competitive aspects, particularly when one group whether it's the guys or the girls are outnumbered and who has the power then to decide who they wanna be with. When people are choosing who's gonna be their perfect match because they have to decide to match up each night and if you're not matched up, you have to leave. There's this weird power dynamic of who gets to be the chooser and who's the one that's left being chose, especially if they didn't get picked by their perfect match. So like, I'm gonna be honest y'all, Francesca had a lot of power in that house. She was doing a lot of the choosing and she knew she'd be chosen no matter what. So as a result as well, Francesca walked around that house like she knew she could be with whoever she wanted to and decide whoever she wanted to leave to leave. She may not have said that, but that's what it was giving. She also had this really nonchalant attitude the whole time that she had all this power, but it was just very whatever to her. And I think it's funny that you notice that with a lot of the guys on the show, particularly, there was this, okay, well, I'm just trying to see what my options are. I'm just trying to see what, you know, I like this person, they're cool, but I'm ready to see who else is out there. I'm ready to see who else is gonna walk in the door, Bartice. Chase, Nick, Mitchell, to name a few. They would have this, and I've talked before about this, this is not something new, but there is a book that I read last year called Rethinking Sex by Christine Emba. Chill has now slithered into our economic lives and forced those among us who would like to exchange feelings and accountability to compete in the blase Olympics with whomever we are dating. Chill asks us to remove the language of courtship and desire, lest we appear invested somehow in other human beings. It is a game of chicken where the first person to confess their frustration or confusion loses. Chill is a sinister refashioning of calm down from an enraging and highly gendered command into an admirable attitude. Chill presides over the funeral of reasonable expectations. Chill takes and never gives. Chill is pathologically unfeeling, but not even interesting enough to kill anyone. In an earlier section of the book, Emba talks about resetting terms and says, quote, 
In 1972, feminist scholar Joe Freeman argued that when groups operate on vague and structuralist terms, that structuralistness, quote, becomes a smokescreen of the strong and the lucky to establish unquestioned hegemony over others. And the reason I like to connect these two points is because when we're dating people, I don't know if this is y'all's experience, but my experience has been that people just want you to be chill when people are describing someone that they're dating they're like i just like them they're super chill super calm and it's not to say that you shouldn't have that in your relationships or in your dating life you should be able to date people and not feel overwhelmed or anxious all the time but in my observation it's like people use this chillness as a way to create vague relationship dynamics so you leave yourself asking what are we to each other even if you're not trying to say i want us to be in the couple form but like what do i mean to you what is this relationship dynamic people will be vague will be purposely like ah evasive and all this other stuff purposely ambiguous under the guise of it's chill don't worry about it so that they don't have to have any sort of not just responsibility but also just actual like investment or full engagement in the dynamic that they're apparently wanting to create with you it's weird to me and i'm someone who doesn't really have that much chill so of course i'm gonna think that it's a complete opposite side of the spectrum to me but it's also just why and when did it become cool to not care about the people that you're dating and even just hooking up with because it doesn't mean that you have to be seeking a relationship every time you go out but you can still even hook up with people just want to have sexual relationships with people in a way that leaves them feeling like they actually have been communicated with and there's actually intention with the dynamic that you're trying to create power dynamics happen in relationships for so many different reasons but speaking to this point this vagueness this chillness there is this if I don't communicate and if I'm withholding, even if I'm not trying to act like I'm in control of the relationship or I'm trying, even if I'm not outwardly saying I want the power of the relationship, that's what ends up happening because the person that has no chill, the person that is willing to be vulnerable, the person that is willing to say how much this person means to them or what they want out of the dynamic or relationship is the one that's left in a position of, well, you gave me all your cards, you told me all your things. Gotcha, bitch. That's not a favorable way to say that, but this this is the vibe. As someone who's been dating for a while, this is, this is the vibe that I tend to feel. And I'm curious to know if y'all have this too, or feel this vibe too. Another thing that I notice in this show that I notice in dating life as well, and this is anecdotal, so grain of salt, this is just my experience is this idea that whoever can care the least, whoever can seem the least invested in what's happening, ends up having the most power in the relationship dynamic. And like I was saying about Francesca, you could tell that, that she walked around like she knew. <laughs> and it, she seemed really unbothered. Even the way people would be talking to her, she'd be like, uh-huh. Yeah, totally. You know when you see somebody checking out while you're talking? She did that a lot. No, and I'm not trying to insult her. I'm just, anyway. But even a lot of the guys would adopt this attitude of trying to seem super chill. Hey, baby boy. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Tiny. Of trying to seem super chill, trying to seem like, yeah, they were interested in the person they were with, but they also had one step, one foot out the door, waiting to see if somebody better was coming along. So they didn't want to invest too much of their time, except for Dom. Dom had no chill. Dom, <laughs> damn. When Francesca left Dom and Shane, those two, they had their, they led with their hearts. Cute. And I've talked before about this. I think I discussed it in the live stream last week. When there is ambiguity, when there is uh, this nonchalant attitude of, ah, it's no big deal. We'll figure it out. We don't need to, really? We don't need to talk about what this is or our boundaries or what we're doing here. Let's just chill. When there's all that, it leaves room for power dynamics to happen, for somebody to be in control. And usually the person that's in control, that is in charge, that has the power, is the one that is more withholding, the one that is not leading with vulnerability or leading without chill. 
when you're leading with vulnerability and an open heart, let's say, which is what you have to do with dating in order to get to know people, especially because a lot of people are dating complete strangers. So yes, you do have to open up to them. You don't necessarily have to do it right away. People do need to earn your trust for sure. You do need to be willing to be vulnerable with somebody else if you're wanting a relationship with somebody that is beyond superficial in any level of your life, but especially if you're thinking about a romantic relationship, if that's what you want, someone to know you deeply inside and out. If you refuse to have that as part of your dating agenda, if you are withholding in that aspect, if you are always one foot out the door, if you're always, ah, I'm not really gonna give my all or my, all my attention to this, whatever, it's your right. No, I'm not trying to tell you you're not allowed to do what you want, but it's just like, if you are not even willing to focus your attention on someone for a time, everybody has a whole phase, everybody has a, you know, whatever. Everybody dates around, sure, fine. If you're not willing to, it, uh, how do you expect to have meaningful, deeply intimate relationships? How do you expect to have that partner that's gonna be your quote unquote ride or die that all y'all are talking about? The one that's gonna be with you through thick and thin that just gets you, that can look at your face and see what you're, you're feeling. The, I don't know, like all the stuff that people describe of their ideal person. <laughs> Here I fucking go. Nobody wants to do the work to get that ideal person. <laughs> Speaking of work. I feel like anytime I talk about relationships and dating, I always get to this segment about everybody has an idea of the kind of person they want, right? The kind of person they want to be with. Your perfect match, quote unquote. But what the hell are you doing to be somebody's perfect match? If you are not willing to gain some self-awareness, which to me is not just what do I think of myself? How do I articulate myself? How do I explain myself to people? But how do others experience me? Could some of those things be true? Yes or no? Are you someone that has really investigated and learned about your own emotional intelligence. And again, emotional intelligence is not just, I am able to understand that I'm feeling things, I'm able to explore them and then articulate them. That's all great, that's part of it, but it's also when I'm feeling things, I'm able to regulate my emotions. Cause a lot of us don't know how to regulate our emotions and be dumping shit on people, but we claim we're emotionally intelligent. Just because you can identify emotions does not mean that you're emotionally intelligent. That's one piece of the puzzle, y'all. Come on now. And also, what do you value? What do you value in yourself? What do you value in another person? What are, what are those things non-negotiable for you? I'm someone who values humor. I love to laugh. I need to have yuck yucks in my life. So whoever I'm with has to also be that way. I'm someone who values hard work. I really value learning. And if I'm with someone, they have to have as voracious an appetite for that as I do, because I wanna be able to talk to the people in my life about the stuff that I'm learning or the stuff that they are and be like, did you know this and what, ah, you know? And those, that's just a few stuff. And that's stuff that took me time to learn about myself. And I think it's something that's really important for all of us too. I know this is Netflix is a dating reality show. I know that there's not really a purpose because most of these couples aren't even together now anyway, as far as the time of recording this, which is the 28th after the last episode came out. I know, I know it's for entertainment purposes, okay? But I just mean a lot of people watch these shows and know it's not real, know it's whatever, but there are still elements of it that translate. And it's why so many of us get so entertained by it. And he has drama and mess and stuff. And I think because it seems like a lot of folks are dating less, having less sex and really maybe taking stock in the relationships they have and the kinds of relationships they want, not just having it for the sake of having it, but what kind of quality of relationship do I want? And that's just one aspect. But I think if that's the case, then we also have to start examining ourselves and what we're bringing to the table, what we're not bringing, what we're capable of, what we're not, and the ways dating expectations kind of force a lot of us to not really ask ourselves these questions because it seems like it's all mapped out for us. I don't know. Anyway, this was just a fun little ditty because I am still doing some research on a couple of other videos and God, that teen sex show one, I'm working on it, man. Oh, I'm working on it. 
Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all thought about the show. Clearly I'm getting tired, so I'm gonna have to stop filming. Sometimes you just hear yourself. Sometimes it's best to know when to stop talking and I'm gonna do that now. So leave a comment if you want. Be sure to check out the links in my description. Check out Cheeks, uh, check out some merch if you want to and my podcasts, yeah. As always, be sure to feed your plants, water your plants, and remember that you can always change your mind because you can. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.